Hello everybody, Jesse here from Jesse Inspired. You welcome to the 10th video of my shell series guys. And this video promises to be really rewarding because arguably we'll be adding the last piece of the puzzle to seeing how the shell program actually works. So I'm really excited to show you guys. So without further ado, let's just get started. Now, in our previous video, we were introduced to the concept of command line arguments. And we saw the prototype of the main function that helps us process the argument counts and the argument vector. But this right here you're seeing is a standard implementation in C. But for the purpose of this tutorial and for the purpose of making our own shell program, we will need to implement our own version of the command line argument. So I'm just going to wipe this off and change it to void and we'd still be good. Now, in order to achieve this, I've included the necessary header files we'd be using. So I included sdl.h because we'll be using printf and getline and um, sdlive.h because we'll be using malloc and free for dynamic memory. Um, string.h because we'll be using string copy and uni standard.h because we'll be using exec v. Even before we write any code, I just like us to technically understand how the shell program works. Okay, so right now we are delving into some technical stuff. Okay, so I'm really excited. So a shell environment is called an ARU APL. So ARU stands for read, E stands for evaluate, P stands for print, and L stands for loop. So basically, every shell environment will provide you with these four steps in this order. Read, evaluate, print, loop. So currently, I have Z shell running in this terminal. And right now, the first thing you can see is this prompt to read in input. So in a shell program, the first thing you want to think of is the ability to read in input, isn't it? So let's go ahead and pass in this statement expression 2 plus 2, and I'm going to hit enter. Now, once I hit enter, what happened was that this expression right here was evaluated under the hood by this Z shell process. So that's the second step, evaluate. Now, once it got evaluated, the result of the evaluation was printed out, which is four. That's the third step, print. Now, once it was printed out, you realize that we looped back to this prompt to receive input again. So that's the fourth step, loop. So this is basically how every shell program works. I hope this made sense. So to get started, I'm going to be defining some variables which we'll be using. And just in case you don't understand how any of them works right now, don't worry, as we progress, I'm going to be explaining them okay. So first, I'm going to be creating a variable called cmd, which would be a pointer, and this would hold the command which I read from my standard inputs. I'm also going to be making a copy of cmd, and I'll explain why in a moment. I'm also going to initialize this to null. Next, I'm going to be creating a variable called token which would hold the tokens returned by string to. Oh, so I think I have an error here. So let's go ahead and wipe this off. So everything looks good for now. Next, I'm going to be creating my delimiter. I'm going to call this delim. And check this out, guys. I'm using not just a white space this time around for my delimiter. I'm using a white space and a new line. And I'll be explaining why I'm doing this in the actual progress. But for now, please just take note that my delimiter is a white space and a new line. Next, let's go ahead and create this variable n, which will hold the size of the buffer. Next, let's go ahead and initialize our own axis. So let's initialize it to zero. I'm also going to be creating this counter variable right now called i. I'm also going to initialize it to zero. Having done this, let's create our own arg v. Okay, so as you can see right here, I'm using a double pointer. If you remember the former prototype of the main function that we did, we saw that arg v is actually a null terminated array of strings. So you could use a double pointer like this to implement it or a pointer to character array. But I'm using this Im implementation because um, it's much more flexible in my own opinion to work with, okay? Especially working with dynamic memory. Having done this, the first thing you want to do while creating your shell program, if you remember, is to read in input. So let's go ahead right now and implement that. So to read in input, we're going to be using getLine. And um, from our previous videos, we just assumed that getLine is always successful. But it's a possibility that getLine could fail and it returns negative 1 on failure. Um, there's also something else that makes getLine return negative 1, which is called the end of file condition, which is beyond the scope of this tutorial. But for now, I'm just going to be doing that field check right now on getLine. So I'm going to be doing if getLine and cmd and n, stdin, the standard inputs, 
equals negative one. So if it fails, uh, we just want to return negative one. That's all. Okay, so this looks good for now. So right now we want to evaluate our axi. And technically speaking, axi just has to do with the number of tokens you can retrieve from your string. So right now, when you're reading your command from your standard input, remember it's just a string. But when you call string to on that string, you're able to tokenize that string into different tokens. And the number of tokens you can retrieve from that string, like I said earlier, evaluates to your RC. Simple enough, isn't it? Well, the issue about string talk, as we discussed earlier, is that calling string talk on a string alters the original string beyond repair. So um I would need to make a copy of the original string, okay, so that once I'm done evaluating the value of arc C, I can still have the original string to do whatsoever I want to do with it. So that's what necessitated the creation of this variable CMD copy. And to achieve this, I'm going to be using the string zoo function. And now at the beginning of this tutorial, I talked about using string copy, but I kind of prefer string zoo because I don't have to bother so much about malloc, right? So let's go ahead right now and call the strings of function strings up and let's just copy our command inside um, command copy so that looks good for now so right now we are actually ready to evaluate our axi but i told you guys that um i was going to explain to you why we're using a new line character as part of our characters for our delimiter now we are doing that because whenever you read in text you read a line from a stream it automatically appends a new line character to the end of that line, okay? So a simple hello world text, as you can see on your screen right now, evaluates to this when you read it, as you can see right there with a new line character, when you read it from your stream. And going forward, um, trying to implement a command with a new line character appended to it will throw an error, especially when you're using exec B, because it won't be able to recognize that command. So let me just prove to you what I'm talking about. So as a simple test, I'm going to be looping through CMD to check if you have a new line character actually appended to it. And then secondly, I'm also going to print out the length of the CMD string. So let's go ahead and use a while loop to achieve this. So I'm going to do while, placing my condition, CMD I, just like that. Next, I'm going to do if cmd i, so if the character is a new line character, I'm going to print out a literal new line character. So I'm going to do a print f just like that. And I'm going to escape this um, backslash just to print out a literal, um, a literal new line character. Next, let's just have a simple format that makes our text easy to read. I'm going to say input has percent ld characters just like that next for this format specifier right here i'm going to be using the length of the cmd strings so i'm going to do string length cmd just like that next i'm going to use the else statement and i'm going to print out the character we are currently at so print f percent c just like that cmd i and i'm going to increment it now, if this doesn't make sense, just stay tuned for my explanation of the outputs and it all makes sense, okay? So just before we compile, I'd like us to add a simple prompt right here just before get line. So print F, just like that. And in our case, it will be a simple classic dollar sign. So all the text will be reading using get line would appear just after this dollar sign and the space which I've specified right here. Let's go ahead then and build and execute, okay? So... So as you can see, that's our dollar sign right there. So I'm just going to type in a simple text like hi, H-I. So as you can see right here, it says hi. Rather than having two characters, it has what? Three characters right here. And it actually has three characters because the third character is in new line, like I told you guys, that's appended to it. So um, if you remember from what we did right here, we actually um, printed out a literal new line character. So we escaped the backslash so that we could prove that actually at the end of everything that is read from the stream there is a new line character appended so let's just say for example i was to execute this same script again and let me put in for example a four letter word like um or a five letter word like hello okay so you can see right here it says it has six characters because there's a new line character appended to it simply because we are reading it from a stream so adding a new line character right here to our list of delimiters actually helps us eliminate the new line character from our tokens. So that's where execv is able to identify our tokens as commands and execute them. So I hope this made sense.
So with this information, we're ready to compute our own Arcs implementation. As you can see right now, we've deleted the while loop test so that we can start writing our code. So to get started, I'm just going to type in token is equal to string talk CMD the limb. So I'll be tokenizing this string CMD. Next, I'm going to run a while loop. And I'm going to say while token. Next, I'm going to do token is equals to string talk null the limb, just like that. Next, I'm going to be incrementing the value of axi. So axi is actually the variable we defined right here. And um, just to give you guys a little recap, axi stands for our own implementation of the argument count. And it is actually the number of tokens you can derive from this string CMD. So for every time we tokenize this string, we are going to be incrementing the value and the resultant value of this variable would be the argument counts. So let's go ahead and test it out. But first things first, make sure to initialize this axi right here to zero. So you don't have a garbage value when you print out your value. Next, I'm going to run a simple print F right here. So print F percent D new line axi. Let's go ahead and compile and execute. So I'm going to type in hello world. I should be expecting to see two right here on my terminal if it's working. So as you can see, two actually showed up. If I run this again, uh, let me put in something like hello, hi there. As you can see, three. So the implication is that our axis is actually working as expected. So right now we want to compute our argv, which is actually our argument vector. And like I told you guys before, that the argv is a null terminated array of strings. Now, to take it even further, we're going to be using the argc to compute the argv, the argument vector. Now, how does this work? Since argv is a null terminated array of strings, the number of elements inside this argv array is defined already by argc. So if argc is 3, the implication is that the number of elements inside argv would be 3. And if argc is 4, the implication is that the number of elements inside argv will be 4. So we can allocate memory using the value that has been defined already for us in argc to compute our argv. So I hope this made sense. So let's go ahead right now and define argv as malloc size of a pointer to character. Or this just basically means size of a string because in C there is no inbuilt string data type. But just how many strings will be contained in argv? Argv will have as many strings as we have defined in argc, just like that. Now, what we currently have as argv, like I told you, is an array. Okay, so we currently have the array because we've allocated memory for it. But right now, we need to define the elements inside the array. And the elements inside this argv array, as we discussed about, is the tokens that you have gotten from the string that you read from your string. So right now, we will need to tokenize the CMD copy to retrieve those individual tokens and place them as the elements of this argv array. So I hope this makes sense. So let's go ahead right now and implement it. So the first time we called string talk right here was actually because we wanted to find how many tokens we had so that we could allocate space for our array. But right now we're going to be calling string talk again, but this time because we want to define the elements of the array. So let me just recap. The first time was because we wanted to find out how many elements will be inside the array so we can allocate space for the array. Mm -hmm. Now we want to define the individual elements of the array. So I hope that made sense. So we're going to define token right now as string talk of cmd copy and we're going to be using the same delimiter just like that next we're going to run a while loop i'm going to say while token and our conditions would be first things first argv i would be equals to token so what that means is that we are going to be um, defining the element at this index of argv to the value we have on that current token next we are going to be doing token is equals to string talk string talk just like that um no delim okay and next we're going to be doing i plus plus we are going to be incrementing it so this basically means that the very first token that we're extracting from cmd copy will be set to the first element of argv because you remember that i was set to zero so argv zero will be the first token that we're extracting from cmd copy 
Then we move to the second token and then we increment the value of i. So currently we'll be at argv1, isn't it? Next, we're going to set the value of the current token to argv1. And this loop will continue as long as token is not null. But just in case token becomes null, the implication is that we'll be existing this while loop. And we will need to set the final element of argv to be a null pointer. Why? Because by definition, argv is a null terminated array of strings. So by so doing, we've been able to extract all the tokens from CMD and assign them to the elements of argv and terminate this argv array with a null pointer. So I hope this made sense. So right now, let's test it by printing out all the elements of argv. So I'm just going to use a simple while loop to achieve this. Okay. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and print out every single element and then put a new line character just like that. Like the i plus plus and since we have just one statement inside our while loop i can afford to remove the curly braces and we'd still be good next for memory safety purposes let's just go ahead and free cmd we'd also free cmd copy and finally we'd free like this everything is good for now let's go ahead right now and run it so go ahead and open up your terminal and build and execute your code then type in a simple text like was blind, now I see, <laughs> hit enter. As you can see guys, we have five being printed out on our terminal showing that our RxC is working. And then we also have each element of our ArcV also being printed out showing that our code is working as expected. Okay guys, so that's it for the custom command line arguments. I hope you guys enjoyed this because I personally did. Um, if you like this video, please go ahead and like the video. If you have a better way to achieve this, you're also welcome to drop a comment for me in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you must want to consider subscribing for more videos just like this. And that's it from me for now. I'll see you in the next one.